Okay, so, so what I'm going to hope to do today is I'm going to try and tell you the only scientifically proven way to live a healthy, a healthy, that's not a real word, a happy, healthy, and longer life. So I'm going to tell you about the single only thing that's ever scientifically been proven to do that. And it's very simple, really. It's a Kelpie. If you get yourself a Kelpie, you're guaranteed to live a healthy, happy, and longer life. And it's scientifically proven, and I'm, since I'm not a politician, I have to back that up with actual facts. And that's what I'm going to do over the next 15 minutes. And so, how is it possible that I can tell you that there's scientific evidence that owning a dog like this will allow you to live healthier, happier, and longer? Well, the key aspect of that is this one statement. The breed is unsuitable for a sedentary life. <laughs> that is the warning that everybody is given if they know that they're actually getting themselves a Kelpie. And so this is actually exactly the same as you and I. We, as a breed, are completely unsuitable for a sedentary life. And hopefully what I'm going to be able to do over the next little while is show you exactly what I mean by this and exactly how not leading a sedentary life, being active, is going to allow you not only to live longer, which people maybe understand to some degree, but live happily and to live healthily. Okay? So the first thing that your Kelpie is going to do for you is help you live longer. And this is studied from an old mentor of mine, John Halsey. And what he did here, this is data from rats, but the same data has been collected on humans. It's cross-sectional, so it's less obvious as what we see here. But everything that we see here is exactly the same as what you see in the human data. And that is, if you take active, whoops, there we go, active individuals here, their life expectancy, or the number of them surviving over time, is always going to be higher than the sedentary version. So what that means is that your Kelpie is going to take you off of this line up onto this line. At any point in your life, by being active, you're going to shift. That shift, it doesn't look too big because these are rats, but that shift, that's 9%. Over the lifespan of a human, 70-ish years, that equates to almost seven years. So the first thing that your Kelpie is going to do by making you active is it's going to increase your lifespan by approximately seven years. That is a huge thing that you've just been given. You've been given seven years of life. Lots of us wish we had an extra minute or two in a day. This is the whole seven years in your life. Okay, but this, doesn't, this tells us a little bit about the, the longer aspect of it. But it doesn't tell us anything about this happy aspect. We might not all have the same definition of happy, but a lot of people would come to a certain conclusion, and that's that if we're of sound body and sound mind, that we maybe have a job that we are happy with that's rewarding to us. And maybe that as you reach a certain age, that we're giving every possible advantage to our children. And so that's what I'm going to try and show you are the next things that, that your Kelpie is going to do for you. Because you've got a longer life, now what are you going to make of that life? Well, this is some really interesting data that was collected from a Swedish group. 1.2 million boys at 18 years of age. So this was conscription for the military. And what they do, any time you enter the military, they give you a battery of tests. A number of them are intelligence tests, some of them are fitness tests. What they found when the researchers went back and looked at this, it's pretty obvious. Those who are of higher fitness were also of higher intelligence. So this could be completely coincidental. Maybe it is that the smarter people know that it's important to exercise and they exercise more. That's a general possibility. So what they did is they took a, a small subset, 16-year-olds, trained them for two years, tested them before and after. What they saw, the 16-year-olds were smarter at the end of the training. So their aerobic fitness increased, their intelligence increased by these measures, and this is completely linear. So the fitter you are, the more intelligent you are. I used to tell this to when I lived in the UK, and everybody immediately thought of their favorite football player, and they thought, oh, that can't be right. That's the first. <laughs> and so that, again, is societal. That's sociological, because once you show gift at basketball, football, one of these important sports that's going to make you millions and millions of dollars, people tell you, don't worry about all of that education stuff. Focus on what you're doing. And so some of the greatest athletes that you know, everybody will say they are the smartest. They have great intelligence on the court. And you meet them, 
And you're really at a loss for where this intelligence is. But it's all focused in one area. This is, again, aerobic fitness intelligence. Your Kelpie is going to take you. It's not uncommon to double your fitness if you start an exercise program. So if you look at this, if you go from about here, you go up double, you're about here, your intelligence has gone up significantly. All due to that wonderful little dog you've got. So this, talking about 18-year-olds, but the benefits actually start way, way earlier than this. It's hugely earlier than this. And what I mean by that is, even before you're born, there's a beneficial effect of exercise. This is the first gift you can give to your children. So what this experiment is, this is again in animals, but the exact same data has been shown now in humans, not necessarily for the intelligence or the memory part, but for other aspects physiologically. What they've done here is they've taken a group of pregnant animals, and they've kept some of them sedentary, and they've taken the other group and they've exercised them. They've let them have their offspring, and they've allowed them to grow. Neither one of the offsprings had any access to exercise. And then what they did is they gave them learning and memory tests. And what they saw, if the mother ran, they had 25% greater learning capacity, greater memory, than if the mother was sedentary during that time. When they looked at the brains, the animals who were born to running mothers, they had 25% more neurons within the areas of the brain that were involved in creativity, learning, and memory. So the first gift that you can give your child is to be active during your pregnancy. It's the most important thing because, again, that is an opportunity where you're going to build the brain. You're going to give this offspring the opportunity to succeed to a greater level. Now, I've told you so far about the endurance aspect, so getting out there and, and being active in general. But there's also a strength aspect because exercise is both endurance, the ability to go for a long period of time, and strength, the ability to do things and to, and to carry your weight primarily or to lift heavy objects. And it's not only the endurance exercise that it's important. This is a study that came out. This was almost 100,000 people that they did this in. They looked here. They did a subset for 60-year-olds. And what they did is they brought people in and they said, OK, here's a battery of tests. What we're going to do is we're going to measure your strength. And what they did is they, put the group, they took the group and they put a third in the weak category, a third in the strong category, and a third in between. And then they looked. They followed them over 10 to 12 years. And over that 10 to 12 years, what happened was a number of them died. And they came back and they looked, well, how did the number of people who died, how does that correlate to whether they were strong, weak, or average? And what you can see here is this is all causes of death. This is the number of deaths per 10,000 people. What you can see is the strongest third was half as likely to die as the weakest third. And so this truism, only the strong survive, is actually a literal truism. What that means is if you're in the strongest third of the population, your chance of death is one half. If this were only cancer, the difference becomes even greater. The weakest third of the population was four times as likely to die from cancer as the strongest third. So if your family has a propensity for cancer, the number one thing you should be doing is increasing your strength, because that is going to be something which potentially is going to fight that disease. So how does your Kelpie do all of these things? <laughs> and this is, this is where it comes to this, the idea of thinking small. So your Kelpie helps you build your endurance. That's the obvious one. Because a Kelpie, and I can tell you from personal experience, the Kelpie needs at least six miles of moderate intensity exercise a day in order to be manageable. <laughs> okay? If you don't have six miles of exercise on your Kelpie, your Kelpie is going to be completely out of control. So in order to do that, that's six miles. Everybody looks at that and says, six miles, I could never run for six miles. But what you have to do is you have to realize that you start small. And that's what we're talking about here. You start small and you build every day. So you get your Kelpie as a puppy, eight to, eight to ten week old puppy, can't go very long. So what you do is you take it around the block. And then every day you take it around a little bit further. So instead of taking around one block, you go around two. And you continue to build slowly that way until the puppy is about six months old. And you're going about three to four miles in your walk. And now what you do is you start to, your Kelpie is beginning to get a little bit more energy. You're beginning to feel better. You can start to add in a little bit of run. So you run for 30 seconds. You walk for four and a half minutes. Over the next 
six months, you're going to build that up until you're running continuously over that whole period of time. By that time, your Kelpie's joints are fully developed and they're able to run continuously as well. And so now what you've done is you've gone from walking around one block to slowly building a little bit every day. And by slowly building a little bit every day, you've ended up at four miles after one year, after 12 or 10 months of being with that Kelpie. And then slowly you continue to build that up until the point where you now will run a little bit further every day until you get up to a, a period where your Kelpie's energy level is, is a little bit lower during the day. And you can deal with them. Okay, so that's the easy point. And that's the, the point there is the endurance aspect. The strength aspect is a little bit different. And the strength aspect... Hey, hi, rocks. Come here. The strength aspect is going to take advantage of a 2,000-year-old principle. The 2,000-year-old principle was the principle of progressive resistance. For everybody, this is Roxy. What we're going to do with Roxy is I'm going to demonstrate for you a 2,000-year-old principle that was made famous by a Greek wrestler. Because what I'm doing right now is I'm building my muscle strength. I'm building the strength of my back, my biceps, and, and I'm going to show you in a second how to do it with your legs. Most of you look at this and say, I couldn't pick up a 60-pound dog right now. But when she, was, when she was eight months old, she was only 10 to 15 pounds. And it was easy. Now it's a lot harder. So what th we've done is we've started slow. We've built every day because I did my exercises with her every day. The famous wrestler Milo of Katona did this with a bull. So this is a lot easier because she started at 10 pounds, ended at 60 pounds. He started with a little bull and ended up with a two-ton steer. <laughs> I'm going to show you one exercise that works probably 80% of your body. And that's a step back lunge. And basically, this is going to make my legs and my lower body completely stronger. But it's also going to work my upper body, as you can tell by my breathing, getting a little bit heavy here, <laughs> holding up a 60-pound dog. And all you do is you take a step back, you bend your knee, touch it, and you step forward. You do it again until you can't do it anymore. <laughs> Because, <laughs> you're, because your gluteus, which is the main muscle you're working, is going to start to get really, really tired. <laughs> you go to the other side, you do it that way. Step up, and you do it again. And now what we're doing is we're building our strength massively. I'm building my whole lower body, I'm building my, most of my upper body, and it's a great opportunity to increase your strength very quickly. So then the only other exercise you do to work your entire body, the only other exercise you have to do is a pressing exercise, like a push-up. A very simple, very easy push-up. You can start from your knees, it doesn't matter, because what you're trying to do is you're starting slow, you're starting with something very, very simple, as simple as you can. We can even demonstrate one of those. If you're down on your knees, people in the back won't be able to see, but essentially all you're doing is you're going down, Touching your chin and your chest and pressing up. You start from your knees, no problem. Because remember, every day you're going to build a little bit more. You're going to try for one more repetition. Maybe you're going to try to get up on your toes. Now, the reality is not everybody's suited for a Kelpie. It's a 10 to 15 year commitment <laughs> to exercise almost every day at six miles of moderate intensity exercise. Maybe that's not what you're going to be able to do. But hopefully what you've seen in, in my talk, there's something within there. Maybe your, your family has a history of heart disease. So my family, no male has ever lived past 75 years. If I want to live past 75 years, I need to be active. Because I need to shift off of that sedentary curve. So if my life expectancy as a bar is 75 years, and I do my activity, that shifts. I get 9% more. If you have a history of cancer in your family, you could do those two exercises that I showed you. Step back lunges with a heavy weight, press ups or push ups. Those two things are going to increase your strength, decrease your likelihood of cancer. Maybe you're going to become a pregnant mother and the first thing you want to give your child is a great opportunity. Maybe you're starting to get a job. You want to remember things. You want to have the greatest opportunity to be successful. The one thing I didn't tell you about the Swedish study, the fittest people, the smartest people, 
They also asked them how happy they were with their jobs, and they got a rating of their job um, as an absolute rating of how good that job was. The fittest people, the smartest people had the best jobs. So somewhere in there, what I want you to do is pick up a little bit of something that's going to get you the power that it's rainy and dark outside, but you remember, you know what? None of my family's lived. Maybe I've got a dog. Maybe I've got whatever it is, something that gets you out the door every single day to be active because that is going to make you live longer, happier, and healthier. Thank you.